Good evening, everyone. I believe you must be tired. This is the last talk. I'm going to uh, make this as short as possible, I promise. In fact, this is probably the shortest talk you've ever heard today. So what happens when a team with 100,000 users goes GPL? Well, uh, my name is Ruzbe Firuzmant. I am the CEO and co-founder of Artbees. Uh, this is where we love to create WordPress-related products, including plugins and WordPress themes, and make a living out of it. You can, by the way, find me on Twitter by this handler, Ruzbe Firuz. So, uh, how many of you are familiar with GPL here? Okay, I think I'm in the right place. As someone who is familiar with GPL, you might have heard statements like this here and there in the internet. Adopting a GPL license for a premium product is a suicide. Or the GPL can present a real problem for those wishing to commercialize and profit from software. Or even the more intimidating one, which is like this. It is a complete no-go for a business, a risk they can't afford. Well, I had the same opinion before, like a couple of months ago, when I was a blind follower of these comments and experiences. But if you ask me today, I would say, these are probably bullshit. And those comments are not true at all. If you ask me today, I would say, on the contrary, licensing your product under GPL can be a secret key to your business success, the one that you've been waiting for it for a long time. So you might be asking, how is that possible that you give away your product, you give your product for free, and at the same time succeed in the business. It doesn't make sense. It's not logical, isn't it? Well, I'm going to tell you how, but before, let's just once again review what GPL is actually is and what it means for customers and developers and business owners. Well, GPL stands for General Public License. It is the most commonly used free software license. It is developed by a Harvard student in 1985 called Richard Stallman. This guy. As a matter of fact, he's an interesting guy. He has an interesting character, characteristics. Uh, for example, he's very concerned about privacy and free software licenses, and that's why he has his own very customized computer, which runs on a completely free BIOS computer initializer and a free, completely free operating systems. And uh, he never used Google for searching. He never used Gmail or other popular email services for sending emails. Obviously, uh, he never used social network. And he's also completely against non-free software uh, and services. Well, you might call him a privacy freak, and I completely understand this, but um, I think, yeah, he might be too radical on some points, but I do personally respect some of his opinions and viewpoints regarding privacy and free software in this era especially uh, in a world that we are living in right now. Uh, the way he prioritizes privacy and free software over than anything else. That is quite uh, good, I, I think, in my opinion. So this guy, Richard Stallman, was actually a pioneer of free software movement. And in 1985, he founded the Software Foundation, the Free Software Fo Foundation. And Free Software Foundation is a nonprofit organization. People usually call it FSF. It actually has uh, three main activities. Uh, they are responsible for, uh, ad for campaigning to develop a free, completely free operating system. 
uh, which is called GNU, uh, to demonstrate it, it's possible to develop a free operating system that is usable and user-friendly. And also, obviously, they uh, are responsible for world's most popular free software licenses, including GPL. They are also responsible for maintaining it and giving updates for it. And lastly, uh, they aggressively promote and extend um, the adoption of free software across many countries in the world. FSF today is backed and driven by a worldwide community of enthusiast programmers dedicated to the cause of freedom and sharing. So, now that we know a little bit of history of GPL and what it means, let's see what are actual terms, what are the permissions and restrictions of this license. GPL allows your customer to do actually three things. One, to get and run your product. Two, to modify your product however they like. And three, to re redistribute your product for free or even sell it for a fee. So these are three permissions for you as a customer when you're using a product that is licensed under GPL. But all of these permissions are only are, uh, under the roof of only one condition. And that is you have to give the same right to your customers as well. It means if you are using a GPL product and you just distribute it to your friend, you redistribute it to your friend or your colleague or anyone else, that person has to do the same thing. He cannot just limit the redistribution or limit the modification. So that is how this grows exponentially. As you can see in this picture, it is spreads like a virus, pretty much like a virus, and it's highly contagious. And that's why I think it's amazing, by the way. Maybe one of the reasons it's so popular these days. So, there is a myth, though, around GPL. One that is very confusing, and most of the time people are making wrong statements about GPL. They think that GPL enforces you to give away your product, meaning to just give your product for free without charging anything. They say GPL product is the one that you should not charge money for, distributing it, or that you should charge. If you charge money, you have to charge as little as possible, which is not true. That is a huge misunderstanding. As a matter of fact, as you can see in this snapshot that I took from a free software website, it says the creators of GPL, actually, they say we encourage people uh, who really distribute free software to charge as much as they wish or they can. And by the way, I included the URL. You can check it out for yourself if you want to learn more. So you might ask, so why do we call this free software when it's not actually free, necessarily free, when people can just charge anything for it? Well, for the same reason that free beer is not equal to free speech. There's a difference, a huge difference between these two. When we are talking about free software, we are talking about the freedom to run the program, freedom to study and change the program, to modify the program, and finally, freedom to redistribute the program with or without uh, changes. So what actually GPL does is GPL encourages the free software as the freedom to use it not the price. This means you can pretty much sell your product for a penny, for a dollar, for a million dollars, and for billions of dollars, 
but you have to give your users the same right and the same freedom so they can just use your product however they like, they can modify your product and they can do the same thing. You can just uh, give your product to someone else and charge him or charge her for millions of dollars. So this was GPL and now let's just take a look at this quick case study and the real life example that we had in ArtBees a few months ago. Uh, we have a flagship product at ArtBees called Jupiter X. It's a WordPress theme, a premium WordPress theme, was a premium WordPress theme. Uh, it's one of the most popular WordPress themes out there and we are selling it on Envato Marketplace and it has more than 110,000 customers right now. It's actually a 100%, it was 100% pr premium product, uh, meaning there was no free version available at that time. So as a user, if you wanted to get your hands on it and work with it, you had to pay the initial price. Uh, there was no way you can just use a trial version or just a free version or something. And like I said, a couple of months ago, we, start, we, we, we just realized that our sales are declining. They're shrinking, and they, we had to do something about it, obviously. So we sat down and think about it, and we realized that in order to increase the sales, we have to reach out to more people, okay? But how? Well, we realized that in order to reach out to more people, you have to create a community, a, a active, an active and pretty much dynamic community. This was what we need and what we missed from the day one, probably. The next question is how you build a community. Well, after a lot of trial and error, we realized that the first thing you need to do in order to create a community, to build a community around your product, is to earn community's trust. This is the first thing you should do. But how, again? Well, Jupiter X was a premium product. It was published under a closed license. And to earn community's trust, we had to open our doors to community, to people. We had to just let people to use our product for free, by the way, however they like, and we had to give this freedom to our users, our customers, to just play around with our product, however they like, and even redistribute it to their friends or to their customers. This is how you could earn community's trust. Eventually, they would pay the price if they want to upgrade to more premium features or more compl uh, complex uh, functionalities. So this means that we have to make this bold transition from a closed license to an open license, which means before we had this closed business model when people had to pay before using Jupyter and they couldn't redistribute it the Jupiter X uh, to their customers, but after GPL, they could just start for free without being charged. And also, they have this right to redistribute the product, which was completely restricted before, before uh, going to GPL. And the big question, now it's the time for big question, GPL or not GPL, should we adopt it or not? Uh, this is, was the question actually at the art piece for quite some time. We kept asking each other, what is the course that we should take? Should we go with GPL or should we just stop there? Will it be failure or success? And I'm going to be honest with you, this is how we uh, foresaw each other at art piece. This is before G GPL, adopting GPL on the left side. Uh, seems pretty happy and uh, prosperous. And on the right side, after GPL, as you can see, quite broke and 
miserable, uh, but it's slimmer. So this was the thing that we had. This was our mentality back then. And um, you know, Jupiter X was a hundred hundred percent premium product, but even after GPL, we could still sell Jupiter. Um, because, as I explained, GPL allows you to sell your product. We could, still, we could still sell Jupiter for the same price or even more. Uh, but at the same time, we had to also let everyone to modify and redistribute the product, which was insane. So, you know, Jupiter X uh, was a victim of software piracy for years because. It's been like five years that Jupiter is released, and uh, there are a huge number of le illegal copies uh, of Jupiter X circulated around pirate websites. So we had this bad uh, memory of um, software piracy, and we thought, okay, by adopting GPL, by publishing Jupiter under GPL license, we are. It's like we are making this official for users, for customers to rob us, you know. Uh, that was a wrong mentality, but I'm gonna be honest with you, we thought about that a lot. Anyways, we uh, took the risk and we got it started because there was obviously no other way. We, we needed to do something to our business. It was failing. So what happened? Well, guess what? What happened is mind-blowing. Uh, in the first month after the release under the GPL, as you can see here in the February, GPL happens, we had like 2% jump in the sale. We thought that it might be all of a sudden, out of nothing. But in the second month after the release, our sales jumped even further, 8%. On the other hand, we earned more than 6,000 users. Obviously, more of those users are on free tires, uh, free tire, and um, they uh, didn't buy the actual product, but this means that we had like 40% more potential users than we normally did before. 16, sorry, 18% of those free tire users that we just talked about eventually uh, decided to buy uh, Jupiter. And this means that in a whole quarter, we had like 15% sales increase in total. And we didn't stop there. We ran an NPS survey uh, to know what is the feedback from, from customers. Do they love the product? And we were surprised. Customer satisfaction improved more than 15% in quarter. That was unexpected. We didn't even foresee this uh, happening, but it happened. 15% improving in customer satisfaction. But more important than all of these figures and numbers and charts, for the first time ever at Artbees, we had, we started to have a voice, you know, in a massive WordPress community. Millions and millions of users, WordPress users, they could just get their hands on our product freely and they could just enjoy our product, experiment with it, enjoy our products the way they like. And this was a big thing for Artbees back then. So Unlike some of us at Art, unlike what we imagined, some of us at Artbees who were so pessimist about GPL, GPL was a uh, breakthrough, and uh, a response from the market was quite positive. GPL helped us to earn a big community of loyal and active members. It also helped us to increase our sales by a remarkable margin. And finally, it, increased, it helped us to increase our uh, customer satisfaction. But how did that all happen? Uh, well, our marketing team ran a couple of customer surveys and customer researches. And we realized that people are much more prone to pay for your product if you 
provide this option for your users to just experiment with your product for free, okay, without being charged, for unlimited amount of time, and eventually, those premium users, more professional users, those who are more serious about the business, they will pay for your product if they want more functionality and if they want to uh, customize the web, their websites even further. But we also learned a big lesson, lesson out of this, um, and that is do not try to sell. Try to engage instead. So, I can't get enough stressing how important it is for you if you are running a business or if you are thinking of running a business in the future to build an active community, a lively community around your product. Um, if you're thinking about building a relationship with your customers rather than just uh, turning them into dollar signs immediately, I think you are on the right track. And as a quick recap, the GPL and its advantages for our business, we could build a trustful and lively relationship with our customers for the first time. We could also generate more new customers by word of mouth. We could reduce churn rate, which means more loyal customers. And finally, it's not all about business. You know, people are used to return the favor if you do something for them. Some of our enthusiast professional customers uh, helped us to fix some of the bugs and extend Jupiter even further. And finally, no one can put this better than Quickest Proud website. Make your customers happy and you will win their business for life. Your competition won't stand a chance. Thank you, everyone. Well, uh, thank you very much. This, this actually is a very, very interesting um, talk. I'm actually a member of the Greek uh, open source community, and I'm pretty uh, familiarized with the GPL and everything. It's just that most of the people, when they think about business and revenue, uh, they haven't actually thought that this is WordPress. Yeah. It's actually is GPL. What you're using is GPL. Uh, an example was, I, I, I bet it would be like WooCommerce the same, which would sell some extra stuff, but you would have the basic usage and so many more. And your especially presentation was, uh, had all the key points that I could identify. So thank you very much for that. You're welcome. I'm not sure if there are any questions, but we're glad to hear. We have, uh, we have time for questions and maybe some short conversation. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Got two questions. Sure. First of all, how do you handle support on the free tier? Do you offer support? You mean after the GPL or in general? After the GPL? For the users that are on the free tier. Yeah. Uh, you know, af when you adopt GPL, your WordPress product can go and can be listed under WordPress.org, okay? And they have their own community forum up there. So we use WordPress.org community forum uh, for our free tire users. And we use a, a different forum uh, for our premium users. But if you're asking about maintenance, we are not like maintaining it uh, every hour of the day. But we are maintaining it like couple of every uh, once in a couple of days Okay. So in the WordPress.org forum. Okay. So that takes me to the second question. Do you, uh, you have published it on the .org repo as well? Yeah. And, and that doesn't have an issue with the ex exclusivity no. status there? No, it's not about exclusivity as these are two different themes, okay? Um, it's a light version. Yeah, this is like, if you check the slug, you will understand that this is Jupyter Lite and the one in the Envato is Jupyter Pro. So they are completely different themes, even though they have like, this is like foundation for the premium theme, but they are different themes. Yeah. I thought that lately they had changed the rules and didn't allow that as well. No, actually, actually uh, Envato is pretty, uh, 
they are trying to be friendly with WordPress community because they are multiple times intimidated by WordPress community, you know. So that's not a problem anymore. Okay, that's yeah. all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, that was that was quick. That was quick. Yeah. Um, I'm not really sure what to ask because uh, I just I said uh, is 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 my thing. I've I've heard it a lot of times. Um, I was just uh, wondered how did you take like the end decision? Did you did you run like did you read something? It was an internal conversation. Did you go through through like uh, other case studies? Because it's a big decision to yeah. jump from the from the let's say pro and premium to something less premium, let's say. So I, I would just, if you have like some insight of what caused that decision, what was the big trigger besides what you were seeing? We were hopeless. We were hopeless, and uh, the business was bad, and uh, we had to do something about it, and we said, okay, this is a WordPress product, and many people, brilliant people, are making good money out of WordPress because they are taking advantage of community. But we do not have any community. And why don't we have any community? Because we are a closed product. So it was like a straightforward answer to our question, you know? So we decided to go with GPL uh, because going with GPL means you can have a community after all. You know, so you can reach out to maximum number of people. You kind of open your doors, and that's what we did. Yeah, just few people realize that, actually. Yeah. Outside our, our community, we get it. I mean, you have to take a risk if you want to uh, prosper anyway, right? So this is the risk that we took back then. So wishing you the best for the rest of the trip. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day.